So, I'd like to now introduce our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Pankaj Gupta. Um, Pankaj Gupta is a strategic IPv6 account executive at NIFO 6. He spent, and in fact, uh, Pankaj, he's, uh, Pankaj, he's actually the person that, like I said, was the one that suggested the theme of the conference, so I think it was only, it was only fitting that he actually does the, the keynote speech. Um, he spent over two years managing the holistic IPv6 enterprise program at his former client, Shell. Um, in the capacity of an IPv6 global uh, program manager. So he's here today to share his experiences and learnings based on, on the expertise of collaborating with companies such as Bactel, Cisco, NYU, Oracle, Google, et cetera, in the IPv6 space. Now he didn't put his here, but also from what I understand, this is a large project that spanned over 100 countries and, uh, and many, many networks. So with that, I'd like to introduce our, our keynote speaker. Um, Punk Jeb, come on up. Thank you, Bruce, and good morning to everyone. As Bruce mentioned, IPv6 is a holistic program, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to share my experiences in running a similar program at Shell, and also collaborating with other early adopter companies like Google, Bactel, Cisco, etc. So today I'm going to cover what are some of the key drivers for IPv6 worldwide adoption. We'll look at some of the transition approaches and popular adoption methods. Perhaps uh, this may not be new, but we will look at those in order to answer why do we need a holistic approach to a program like IPv6. We'll look at some of the examples, and based on those examples, we can figure out how one can start a holistic IPv6 program in their organization. At least, this would be a starting point. At the end of the day, everyone wants to know what are the benefits of having such a program. Uh, so we'll look at some of those benefits in terms of cost, because that's one criteria that everyone talks about. And finally, I'll share my thoughts on the return on investment. Is there any return on investment running an IPv6 holistic program or not? I'll share my views, and we'll see whether it is for real or not. Uh, moving forward, uh, these are a few categories of drivers. Obviously, the exhaustion of IPv4 addresses. We'll look at industry trends that are driving IPv6. And also, some of the popular internal themes that organizations have in their organization uh, functions that can help them go to IPv6 program. So jumping directly into the IPv4 exhaustion. We already know the world has run out of IPv4 addresses. That's for real. The global demand for IPv4 has already peaked. The regional internet registries are currently issuing IPv6 addresses. One thing uh, you must know that if you go to a regional internet registry like Afrinic and RIPE, the process of requesting an address block based on your business requirement is unique. It's not the same. So if you are at a point where you have already made a decision, uh, I would say start working with these internet registries to get the next step. IPv4 exhaustion, as we know, is there for real. But the IPv6 adoption is very young. As per the statistics, it's close to 1% or maybe a bit more. But based on what I see in the industry, IPv6 is actually 
a business continuity and growth enablement initiative. And we will not be surprised to see very rapid expansion and adoption of IPv6 in commercial areas. What are the external drivers? So let's look at that. National mandates, IPv6 strategies. If you work with companies in global marketplace, such as China, India, Korea, which are adopting IPv6 at a faster pace, legal and regulatory compliances of various joint partners or countries are key drivers to your IPv6 adaption. These are things you can't ignore. Government is your key stakeholders. One policy change can impact your organization, so be prepared for it. As I mentioned, IPv6 is a growth enabler. So the growth, the expansion, and the infrastructure evolution that is happening all around us in terms of cloud, smart grids, smart cities, we already know about those, 4G, near field communication, NFCs, all these are key drivers to adopt IPv6. According to network industry, IPv6 is the plan of record. There's no other alternative. If there's no other alternative, where can you go? It's a question of when, not a question of if. So these are some of the industry drivers that are already driving organizations to adopt IPv6. Consumerization, globalization, we are all part of it. According to one statistics, by 2014, there will be three billion, and that's a billion with a capital B, mobile devices. We already know that's going to happen. 4G is already IPv6 by default. 3G, release nine, enables dual stack. Another Gartner service, by 2015, 17% of internet will use IPv6. These statistics are phenomenal when you know there's no other alternative. So my guidance is IPv6 is a necessity. It's not an option. And there may be other drivers that we can look at, but these trends are definitely impacting organizations that are global in nature, as well as anyone who is part of globalization. Some of the internal drivers, and I put together some of the common themes. Again, internal drivers are unique to your organization, such as the IPv4 address exhaustion within your organization. You may have enough IPv4 pool left. However, you may not have enough contiguous addresses to run a big size project. Think about the money you spend in reclaiming that space. Again, all these, if, as an organization, if you're already part of strategic outsourcing or if you're thinking about it, cloud, big data, all these initiatives that are there, I call them IT real estate optimization. That's what a lot of organizations are doing. They are consolidating their global data centers. They are virtualizing. They are trying to become more efficient and nimble. They want to be there to get their first step in the growth market. If you are a bigger organization, have plans for acquisition, joint ventures, which most of the organizations have one way or the other, think about your operations work. Today, you may have asset refresh cycle, network refresh cycles, server refresh cycle. If you have a five-year cycle, that means you're already replacing 20% of your assets every year. If you have a IPv6 holistic program, this evergreening can actually logically be a part of that. Because the way I look at the cost of IPv6 holistic program is two pronged. One, cost of acquiring the asset and service, and B, the cost of enablement. 
if you have a program already with these internal drivers, you can minimize and also sometimes eliminate your operation costs because that will be part of the operations. Again, your internal drivers can be more specific to your individual needs, but these are some of the areas that most of the organization fall into. We looked at few drivers, but when the question was asked by Nominum, what is the major business driver for IPv6? Without any surprise, around 90% response was growth. Yes, we looked at leadership, uh, compliance. Yes, companies like Google, Microsoft, other leaders. We also call them early adopters, Cisco, yes. But 90% want to be IPv6 because there's no other alternative. You want to be there now. Let me give you a brief analogy, which is, say you have a disease, you go to a doctor, doctor prescribes you a medicine, and tells you this is the only medicine that's going to help you. Are you going to take the medicine now, or you're going to wait another year and go to ER? Again, the call is yours. Be proactive rather than reactive. This survey kind of tells you you want to be there now rather than later. Now let's look at some of the transition approaches. These are uh, pretty common. Dual stack, as the name indicates, allows a node to have both the stacks, and it allows interoperability with devices carrying either protocol as necessary. Second translation introduces an intermediate device that acts as a gateway to translate V4 traffic to V6 and vice versa, does come up with regret costs, and we'll look at those. Tunneling, another way of transition, allows a means to connect V6 over V4 networks. No matter what approach you use, because it's specific to your organization, you can start with a dual stack, have some translation, have a hybrid solution. My guidance is, if your organization can wait, dual stack is a better approach with least regret cost. We had a guiding principle, dual stack all we can, translate and tunnel where we must. I also like what my friend from Cisco said, dual stack all we can, tunnel where we must, translate when someone has a gun to your head. Now let's look at some of the adoption methods. Uh, core to edge. If you can wait, if you start early, sure you can wait. Then this is one of the most conservative methods in your organization where you have minimum business disruption and least regret cost. Actually having a holistic program with this approach, uh, their cost savings. Edge to core, this is another approach, depends on an organization. If you want to connect your customers, now, sure, you got to take care of your edge first. But it does introduce translation aspect as we discussed and has regret cost. Yes, someone said, it's like a drug addiction. Easy to get in, uh, difficult to leave. Finally, Internet Edge, also known as Thin Edge, has seen the highest growth. Again, no matter what transition approach you use, no matter what adoption method you use, one or a hybrid of this, you require an enterprise-wide program and hence a holistic approach why? The simple reason is IPv6 is not just a networking project. Yes, it does have networking element to it, but it touches almost every aspect of your organization, your servers, etc. So why do you need a holistic approach? As I mentioned, you do need an approach if you want your organization to be ready for tomorrow. For any project to be successful, stakeholder management is 
one of the key criteria. And if you do not take into consideration your key stakeholders, government is your stakeholder, as I mentioned, but within your organization, your other business uh, lines of business, uh, your suppliers, vendors, you need to work with them. And hence, you require a holistic approach to provide results to your business. So we looked at some of the drivers. We looked at some of the transition approaches. Let's look at an example. So here, let's look at an organization where IT functions are divided into three main buckets. Front end, your iPads, your iPhones, your clients, printers, trying to communicate to the back end, your hosting environment, which are global data centers, unless you have your center in your garage with two PCs, well and good. And networking is because that's all you need to connect from the front end to the back end. My technical architects or leaders may look at the same environment in a different perspective. To them, every device in your organization is an IP base. So your workstation has IP address. You are trying to access it through a cloud, going through load balancers, proxies, web app, database, everything is IP. So when you look at this uh, logical, physical, and tier architecture, you already see IPv6 is not just networking, it's impacting virtually everything that your organization has. So when you have a holistic approach, you need to take into consideration your current mode of operation, how your organization operates today, and your future mode of operation. A and that's what should be consider as a big picture. So now, after having looked at and agreed to the fact that we need a holistic program for your organization to be ready for the next millennium, let's say, where can you start? So first task is create a business case. You already have the drivers. You already know your organization. But the business case must be aligned with your IT strategy or your strategic goals of your organization. That's how important it is. Once you have that, you have your executive buy-in. Having that, create a IPv6 roadmap of your organization. Again, keeping into account your future mode of operation because you are currently at ground zero designing uh, architect for your organization for next 50 to 100 years to come, or maybe more. Having all that in place, it's much easier to then spawn different processes. As I mentioned, just because IT is your organization, there are other lines of businesses and other areas like risk management, etc. So one key criteria for your IPv6 is you got to have some kind of addressing schema, as we know. This addressing schema has to be diligently designed for the future. Don't have IPv4 thinking at all when you are doing this work. Once you create your schema, depending on whether you have a global organization with regional or country boundaries, what kind of uh, provider independent or pri provider aggregate space you need, what's uh, your future state of work will look like. Start working with the regional internet registry, as I mentioned. Because here, this work can be done in parallel. You don't have to wait uh, for the program to finish. Similarly, as I mentioned, IPv6 can leverage the opportunities and the drivers that you have in your organization already. Creating a procurement policy by working with your contracts, commercials, legal department, will help you minimize the cost of procuring IPv6 capable assets today. Even if you're thinking about IPv6 program to, for tomorrow, have this policy. You can only have this policy once you have a holistic buy-in with your executive. So that's why having a business case and buy-in would let you move forward or channelize or mobilize your organization into these areas. Create an enterprise-wide risk policy. 
This is something that I learned that not many organizations have. There are a few organizations that I'd uh, worked with uh, clearly possesses uh, IPv6 policy. This is going to guide your security for future. This is going to guide, design your high level and detailed designs when you are going to work through this program. Finally, create a opportunity profile. We all know what the risk profile looks like, what are the mitigation uh, steps you can take. But having an opportunity profile is giving an indication where you are leveraging your opportunities in an organization. For example, I mentioned the evergreening aspect. If you create a procurement policy saying everything you procure is going to be IPv6 capable, your evergreening or asset refresh cycle will not have X to X replacement. It will have X to Y where Y is saying my new asset is IPv6 capable. Again, these are some of the places you can start with. Now, having understand or understood the importance of a holistic program, let's look at an example. So, an example where you have a holistic program in the, in the organization and your organization is divided into three main buckets. So we look at dual stack and core to edge adoption method. This is your organization or an example of the organization that has IPv4 written all over it. Your clients are communicating to the back end using IPv4. So start with dual stacking your network, DNS, DHCP servers, firewalls, etc. At this time, you just created a, a toll road your freeway is still letting vehicles go back and forth. You just created another lane, if you want to call it that way, which does not have any traffic, but you know as soon as you enable the traffic, it can go through it. Your next step, your clients, your front-end environment, dual stack that. Now you will start seeing some traffic. We already know Microsoft products are IPv6 capable since Vista. You just have to turn on the switch. If you use Vista Windows 7 and you do an IP lookup, you will see a dummy IPv6 address, though you have not procured one. So that may be your next step. And the final step is where everything resides, you, the heart of your organization, which is data. You may have hundreds or thousands of applications. So until now, though we have engaged all our stakeholders, the key application folks who are driving these organizations have been learning throughout the process and here's the time that they will be working with you to make sure when you enable dual stack on the servers, the database servers, the app servers, the web servers, they will help you test validate. Again, this is what your future mode of operation will look like at the end of the day. So what you have done with this example, you have created a program in your organization that has enabled your organization to a point where they can leverage their future growth. Why? Because according to Nominum survey, IPv6 is a growth enabler. Now, we talked about how you can follow a dual stack and core to edge approach. Now, if you're running a program, here is an example. So it's a holistic program. You got to have all the project program management functions from start to finish. Have a strategy. Obviously, you already created a IPv6 roadmap that's aligned. You got to do an assessment. Now your organization may have thousands of assets, some not even accountable or not even accounted by your service level agreements. And that's your analysis. That's one of the biggest tasks uh, that you will ever undertake. You can call it a wall-to-wall -wall inventory. You can call it anything. Make sure you assess you got to work with the vendors of all these assets, hardware, software, or not, to make sure whether they are IPv6 capable today or not. If they're not, what is their roadmap? There are certain companies where some of the applications can't work in dual stack. 
Some companies, they don't have an application that can work in IPv6. But that should not discourage us because IPv6 scope is so big that you can start ring fencing and that's the advantage of having a holistic program. Think about what is important to you, prioritize that, and then come back to those minor points. For example, I learned that there is no printer refresh policy in my organization or at my client organization. I think that's true with almost every organization. Printers are there until they die. So, you know, put them aside, but as a program, you already identify that. When you create your high-level design, detail-level design, you got to take into consideration your risk policy, your procurement policy, anything that you, you have done so far. Again, it's an iterative process. You will have to come back and again look at it. And once you are at a point, do a testing. Again, testing cannot be done for applications the way you think. If you have thousands of applications, you cannot create a test lab. Get an agreement on a testing approach. Use 80-20 Pareto, uh, Pareto rule, 95-5 sampling, whatever, because you cannot test each and every application. Uh, this is how your deployment may look like uh, once you have completed all your design and got a sign off. Multi-year, depending on how big your organization is, and you can have a state where you have IPv4 and IPv6 coexisted in your environment. You can think about phasing out IPv4. Some organizations I know have done to, if you have many MPLS, they have done to one, or depending on what your needs, uh, if you're working in a lab, sure. But that's the goal, that now you have brought your organization to a point using a holistic program approach that your organization is ready for the next challenge. Okay, so we looked at a couple of examples. Bottom line is, what are the cost benefits? When I talk to my peers, they say IPv6 is a business continuity issue. There's no return as such. There are no cost benefits. You got to do it. I agree with them. It is. As I said, you are designing an architect for your organization for the next 50 years to come. So you got to do it. There's no alternative. But there are cost benefits in having a holistic program approach. As I mentioned, your costs can be shared by not only IT, but other lines of businesses, suppliers, vendors also. You can work with vendors uh, who are still trying to create a roadmap of their products. You work with river, Riverbed, Cisco, etc. Holistic approach has uh, benefits from your operational perspective. Why? You anyway have your budget for your operations. So why to buy something? And here, when I say buy a, a service, it's not always hardware. So if you are looking for a solution, ask your vendor, ask your supplier, are they IPv6 capable? And you've already taken into account the cost of acquiring that asset as part of your evergreening. That's a substantial cost saving. You got to think about that. Now, some people may ask, what is my budget for IPv6? Again, depends from one organization to another. However, Gartner says can go as high as 6% of your IT budget. But if you think of a holistic multi-year program, your cost can be spread out, plus shared by other lines of businesses. Moreover, once it is done, the cost comes down to 1%. There's your benefit. There are other benefits that you can quantify based on your organization. However, let's look at return on investment. As I mentioned, there is none. Uh, technically true, but Based on Gartner estimate, if you can reduce your operation costs to 1%, isn't that some kind of return? Again, something to think about. As I mentioned, you are at the ground floor for designing what your organization is going to have for next 50, 100 years. My question is, 
think about what is the price your CXO is going to put on something like this to have an organization with a future of 5,200 years. Do you want to wait? Do you want to do it now? Again, return on investment in terms of your organization's growth, being nimble, being able to take advantage of the opportunities. I put an analogy that return on investment, again, whether it's an investment or not, it's debatable, but the, the return is similar to what financial gurus like Warren Buffet have said and proven that if you invest early, you can ride on the principle of compounded growth. It's the same way. If you have a holistic program now, you are more proactive rather than reactive. You already put your organization in a place that it can withstand the challenges of future. You have designed your organization's future in one way or the other. This chart typically highlights the cost savings. Yes, when you execute a project, there's a cost. So, but that project cost, as I mentioned, can be shared only if you have a holistic program. Your procurement, they are there anyway. Your commercial department is there anyway. Only thing they have to do is take IPv6 into consideration, make some policy changes. Your risk department, that's what their job is, to manage risk, create a risk policy. So when you look at a holistic program, the cost savings are substantial. So anyway, uh, we looked at what are the key drivers. We looked at what approaches and adoption methods you can adopt. Bottom line, you do need a holistic program to address IPv6. Why? Because it virtually touches everything that you have in your organization and future is IP-based. Your sensors, your mobile devices, whatever you call your cameras at houses are IP-based. So it's an organization-wide challenge. Yes, there's complexity. We know how complex organizations are, but that's why you need the program now. We already know there's no other alternative. It is the networking industry's plan of record. So be proactive rather than reactive. Though it is networking industry's plan of record, it's not just a network project. So create a roadmap for your entire program. Cost of implementing IPv6, so we talked about some other drivers uh, and the benefits, is very small when you make it a part of your IT roadmap. And being proactive, you can avoid Y2K kind of runoffs. Uh, I like this, uh, there's no flag day, but the world is uh, not waiting. The reason I like this is there was no flag day for smartphone revolution, but still pioneers and giants like Research in Motion, Nokia didn't take step when they should have. Rest is history. It is a business continuity issue, a growth enablement for your organization, and hence requires a holistic approach. Time to strategically invest is now. Thank you. <laughs>